it rolling now. Yeah, we're good. All right, cool. <clears throat> All right, to get a few things out of the way, I keep my collection in semi-alphabetical order. Uh, I change it up a little bit with a couple of franchises in here, but for the most part, it is alphabetical. And I don't really have proper lighting, as you can tell, so... Uh, yeah, I'm just BSing it with opening my curtains. And the window is open, so you're gonna hear some background noise. Because it's, I live upstairs, and it's really friggin' hot up here. And I don't want to roast while shooting this video. So, with that out of the way, let's begin! Start off with 12 Angry Men. I first saw this movie in like 7th, 8th grade. We watched the movie after reading the screenplay in English class, and I love this movie. I've loved it ever since I watched it, so great, great movie. I also, this is the only Criterion collection I have. I need to get more Criterions. 22 Jump Street. Uh, definitely not as good as 21 Jump Street, in my opinion. I really wish I had 21. I'm missing it. But yeah, this one's still pretty fun. I, I still enjoy 22. 28 Days Later and 28 Weeks Later. Uh, I have not seen these, but I did see them at a really, really cheap price in the Walmart bin. So, I grabbed them. 42, The Jackie Robinson Story. This was the first PG-13 movie I ever saw in theaters. Uh, reasoning for that? Uh, I was raised to only watch, like, really, really... Uh, not freaking sirens anyways I couldn't watch anything over the rating of PG until I was 13 in my household because my mom was pretty strict so yeah I will always have a special place in my heart for this movie I don't know if it's as good as I remember it I think it's still pretty great I need to rewatch it though 1917. This is one of the best movies of last year, and this is a gorgeous, gorgeous steelbook. Um, yeah, this will probably be one of my last uh, new releases that I pick up right now because of the pandemic. I did break, and I got one new release today, which you'll see later in the video. But yeah, for the most part, kind of sucks. 2001 A Space Odyssey, this it might be Kubrick's best movie ever. Kubrick is my favorite director. Uh, I don't think, this might not be my favorite per se, but this may be his most well-made, and I had to get it in 4K. I plan on getting all of Kubrick's films in 4K that are released in 4K, and so I'm really, really glad I have this one, because this one does change its prices frequently. This is the movie that helped get me into movies. I credit this with that. Uh, this is Akira, or Akira. Uh, this film is absolutely mind-blowing. I first watched it on an iPod Touch with cracked screen, dead pixels, and I, it blew my mind still, even on that terrible way of watching it. So I watched it again the next day. I was mind-blown. That was the moment where I realized, oh, film is art. It is art, and I love it. And now I have this gorgeous gorgeous steelbook with embossing so yeah Alice in Wonderland this is one of the trippiest movies I've ever seen in my life uh, don't watch this under the influence because if you do you'll freak out because it is a trip when you're sober I never grew up with this movie that's probably why I have that perspective on it uh, but right now I'm in an editing class and one of my projects is that I have to make a trailer for a film that like is different from how it's normally perceived and so I'm gonna make it into like the trippiest thing ever because I'm doing this movie so yeah really really excited for that Alien um, what can I say about Alien that hasn't been said already uh, it's my favorite Ridley Scott movie it's damn near perfect I love like every single minute of it and yeah if you haven't seen it what are you freaking doing man Aliens. I think I like Aliens better than Alien. Uh, James Cameron did such a great job with this movie, and I think this is my favorite of his movies, if I'm being honest. 
There's still a few that I haven't seen. He's only made eight movies. That's insane. He's only made eight. But this is probably my favorite out of all of them. And I really wish I had this in 4K, but it hasn't been released in 4K. I don't have an excuse to not get Alien in 4K. Alita Battle Angel. Uh, this should have been a movie that James Cameron directed. This was his passion project, and instead of directing it, he made a shit ton of Avatar sequels that we never asked for. But anyways, I still liked it. I still really liked it. It's still probably the best American adaptation of an anime. Um, and I'm really glad the 4K came with a 3D disc, because it should be seen in both formats. Angel's Egg. Uh, this is one of the trippiest movies I've seen as well. Uh, this is a bootleg. I do not have an official release of it because there hasn't been one in America. I was recommended by Chris Stuckman to watch it. Not personally, obviously, just through his YouTube channel. But yeah, I, I am floored by this movie and its existential nature, I guess. Uh, if you really like movies... I'm a big fan of these kind of movies, per se. Uh, when directors tackle their inner thoughts about, like, religion or just theology in general, um, this is one of the best of those. There's another one that I've got coming up later that I'll talk about that's related to that in a way. But yeah, I absolutely love Angel's Egg. Annihilation. This one's a lot of fun and interesting and trippy and crazy. Uh, one of the better movies of 2018. Uh, I don't love it, but I really, really liked it. It's a big thinker. Uh, yeah, so definitely worth buying. First in my MCU collection, Ant-Man. Uh, Ant-Man's a lot of fun. I really like it. Not like top-tier MCU by any means, but still higher up there. I'd give it like a B plus, A minus. Ant-Man and the Wasp is not as fun, though. I am really bored this one, honestly. It may be just because it came out in between Infinity War and Endgame, but I just don't get into this one very easily. Apocalypse Now. This is one of the best movies of all time, in my opinion. Uh, this is my favorite Ford Coppola film out of all of them that I've seen. I've still never seen the two Godfather movies. Well, I mean, the two good Godfather movies. I'm still getting to those, but uh, this movie blew my friggin' mind. Uh... It's probably my favorite movie in the tr the Trinity, the Holy Trinity of Vietnam War movies, which I'll talk about more about that in this video and hopefully in a later video because that's definitely something that I love to talk about. But yeah, I've only seen the theatrical cut. I need to see the other cuts. And I'm going to do that with every single rewatching. I watch a different cut. Aquaman. This movie's fun, it's dumb, it's silly, and I love this lenticular digibook. It's Target exclusive. Gorgeous in 4K. Uh, honestly, I can only watch it in 4K. I don't even have a 4K player, but whenever I bring it to a friend's house that has a 4K, we'll watch it. <clears throat> Arrival. This one is pretty crazy. Uh, I really like Denis Villeneuve as a director. He's one of my favorite directors working today. I saw this in theaters, and... I don't know why it came out in this line of steelbooks for, like, Paramount movies that were, like, subpar, when this one is not a subpar movie. This is, like, A tier. But, yeah, uh, I have it. Not in 4K, but still pretty awesome steelbook. Avatar. This movie's a lot of fun, I guess. Uh, James Cameron's latest movie that he's now making four sequels to. I, it's gorgeous to look at. Uh, but, yeah. We've seen the story a couple times, a couple many times. I still dig it. Wish it came, that wasn't 4K, but it hasn't happened yet. This is the better Avatar, Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, one of the best cartoons of all time. Uh, I don't, I did not grow up on this show. Uh, I first saw it when I was like a sophomore in high school, I believe. And so I saw it through a different lens. Uh, I was not too big on it when I first saw it. I really liked it at the end. It like, kind of grew on me. And then I watched uh, Korra. And at the time, I liked Korra more, but I rewatched both of them. And I now think that The Last Airbender is definitely the better out of those two shows. I will say, however, that Korra has a better protagonist. Better main character, for sure. 
I like Korra better than Aang. The Avengers 4K Steelbook. This is gorgeous. This is obviously one of the best superhero movies of all time. And if you haven't seen it, you're living under a rock. Avengers Age of Ultron, definitely not as good, but still a fun time. I enjoy it a lot more than some of the other MCU movies for some reason. I'm not sure why. Avengers Infinity War. Ah, oh, I love Infinity War. Infinity War is one of the best superhero movies of all time, in my opinion. I, I remember my theater reaction to the snap. I was, like, literally in my seat, and everybody could hear me. I was going, like, what the fuck? What the fuck? What's going on? Holy shit. But yeah, it was pretty great. Pretty, pretty great. Um, Endgame is also pretty great. This is the best experience I've ever had in a theater. Uh, ever was was Endgame. I, I absolutely love this movie experience. Uh, and on that note, I think that Infinity War is better as a solid film. And I think that Endgame is better as an experience. Like, if you were to watch all the MCU movies back-to-back -back and then watch Endgame, that's an amazing experience. It's better. It pays off so well. But if you're just going to watch one movie, like, at, just out of nowhere, I would go with Infinity War. Batman the Animated Series. I have not seen all of this, but what I have seen I absolutely love. Um, this set also includes the Mask of the Phantasm movie and the Sub-Zero movie. I have seen Mask of the Phantasm. It is one of the best superhero movies ever, in my opinion. I absolutely adore that film. Uh, still haven't seen Sub-Zero, though. I need to check out the rest of the series. I don't know why I'm waiting on it. The Dark Knight trilogy? The Dark Knight is my favorite movie of all time. Well, it's in contenders for that, anyway. Um, Batman Begins is also incredible. Dark Knight Rises is a lot of everything I wanted, but also not at the same time. Definitely not the best, but still still pretty good. Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. I only watched the ultimate cut. The theatrical cut is not good at all. I mean, the the I mean, still just as messy with the director's cut, but like, at least I can understand where a few things came from that I couldn't with the theatrical cut. Ben-Hur and the Ten Commandments. I'm going to be watching Ben-Hur this Sunday, as of right now where I'm filming this. Uh, yeah, because it's going to be Easter Sunday. I said Sunday, right? Yeah, Sunday. Um, but yeah, I switch off every single year with these movies. I watched The Ten Commandments last Easter, and now I'm going to watch Ben-Hur this Easter. Uh, yeah. Big Fish and Begonia. Uh, this is a Chinese animated film, not traditional Japanese anime. Um... Story's a bit clunky. I don't like a few things about the story, but the visuals are gorgeous. The dub is a bit rocky, but who cares? It's all about the visuals of this movie. Big Trouble in Little China. This is a guilty pleasure, in my opinion. Uh, the production design is astounding. Um, the acting is a lot of fun. And basically... Oh, it's such a, such a, cheesy, such a cheesy action movie. I love, I love Kurt Russell in that movie. Black Panther. I really, really like Black Panther. Uh, it's, it's kind of in the same realm as Ant-Man for me. I think it's better than Ant-Man for sure, but like a lot of people don't like it. Or at least that I, people I talk to and I think they're weird. Yeah, I really, really like Black Panther. Blade Runner The Final Cut. Uh, this is one of Ridley Scott's best movies ever. Uh, I had it above Alien for a long while, but after recent rewatchings, I'm like, eh, I think I like Alien just a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, very revolutionary sci-fi film. 2049, I think is better than the first one at this point, which I never thought I would say. I love the first Blade Runner, but I think 2049 is just a little better. So, here's some guilty pleasure weeb shit. I grew up on this in middle school. I have the first three volumes of Bleach. Uh, I don't think this is a great show by any means. I only ever watched the first three volumes. That's as much as I can take. That's all I ever watched in middle school. But yeah, I still enjoy that show. But yeah, uh, on a side note, I'm going to talk about anime for a, little, for a second. Um, 
most of the stuff in my collection that is anime, I would recommend to anybody who's looking to get into it. I'm not like a crazy, crazy anime person. I enjoy it more as an art craft. That is not art. That is weeb shit. But, like, everything else I think is an art form. So, FYI. Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, this movie's pretty freaking good. Uh, not perfect. I don't think it should have been nominated for Best Picture, but, you know, there weren't a lot of contenders that year. I can't believe it won Best Film Editing. It should not have won Best Film Editing, in my opinion. Boondock Saints. I have still not seen this, but I need to. Breaking Bad, the complete series. This is one of the best TV shows ever made. I am floored by this show. It's astounding. <laughs> Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul are incredible. The writing is incredible, and if you've never seen Breaking Bad, please do yourself a favor. Captain America, the first Avenger. Um, it's, it's good. It's okay. It's good. Winter Soldier is great. Winter Soldier is top tier MCU. And Civil War might be my favorite MCU movie ever. I... I just think about this movie all the time. It's so, so good. Captain Marvel. I don't like this movie I, at all, if I'm being honest. I don't know why I have it in 4K. That was a waste of $30, but I do, I guess. I'm a completionist. Whatever. Captain Phillips. This is a great, great movie. I've only seen it like twice. I saw it when it first came out, and I was like, nah, it's okay. Little, little 13-year-old was like, it's okay. And then I watched it again, and I'm like, Whoa, this is nearly perfect. I, I absolutely love Captain Phillips. Captain Underpants. This is purely for nostalgia. I grew up on the books as a kid, and I laughed my ass through this movie with my two youngest brothers. They were the perfect age for it, and I was the perfect age to remember growing up on it. So, yeah, good time. Moving on, we have Castaway. This is a very well-paced movie. That's the best thing I can say about this. It does not feel like it's two and a half hours long. It feels like it's an hour and 45 minutes. Tom Hanks is incredible. Um, yeah, and Robert Zemeckis did an amazing job directing it as well. Castle in the Sky, the first of my Ghibli collection. I have a great time with Castle in the Sky. Very fun. Not my favorite Ghibli film, but still pretty great. Castlevania Season 1. It should be Season 1 Part 1. Season 2 is really just Part 2 of Season 1. But yeah, this is a great show. I really hope to own the entire series one day. Chernobyl. What an astounding piece of television this is. This is one of the best things I've ever seen on the small screen. Uh, it's chilling, it's horrifying, and it's real. <laughs> it's freaking real. Citizen Kane, the supposed best movie of all time. First time I saw this, I didn't get it because nobody gets it the first time they see it. And But now I think it's a masterpiece. So, yeah. Great. This is the best movie of this year so far, in my opinion. Color Out of Space, starring Nicolas Cage. This is a weird, trippy, body horror type of movie. Uh, I really hope this isn't going to be my favorite movie of the year in the long run. That'd be kind of sad. I mean, I give it like an A minus, but like, oh man, this quarantine sucks. The Cornetto trilogy. These are all hilarious. Edgar Wright is a master of fast timing and pacing. And they, he's such a great comedic genius. I I love all of them. Hot Fuzz is probably my favorite. Cowboy Bebop. I think this is the best anime ever made, well, as far as like TV shows go. Uh. This is pure art. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't seen Cowboy Bebop, watch it, please. Like, I know people who hate anime, but they love Cowboy Bebop. And that's totally a thing, by the way. It also has a movie. And I have the steelbook. And it's a nice steelbook. Creed. Oh, man, I love Creed. Uh, I can't decide if I like this one more than Rocky Balboa or not in comparison to the franchise. I adore Creed. It's everything that Rocky V should have been. Creed 2 is also incredible. I love Creed 2. Not as much as the first one or Ra Rocky Balboa. But yeah, I, I, I love Creed 2. 
Man, I almost reviewed all the Rocky movies leading up to Creed 2, but I didn't, because I'm a lazy bastard. This is my favorite TV show ever. This is one of my, this is probably my favorite steelbook ever. Daredevil, season one, is a masterpiece. And so is season three. I really hope they release season three on Blu-ray eventually. I do have season two, not as good as seasons one or three, but still an excellent follow-up, in my opinion. Next up, we have Deadpool. I have the really, really rare Walmart exclusive Unicorn Steel, uh, not Steel, but uh, Slip Cover. I had to have this. It's so freaking cool. I love it. <laughs> Deadpool is such a great movie, too. I also have Deadpool 2. Uh, not as good as the first one, but, like, yeah, still a great time. This is just the regular one. The slipcover is not meant to be on there. I got it on Black Friday, and I just had to get the slipcover, so I just stole it. Uh, Death Note, the complete series. This is the cutoff for anime TV shows, for me anyway, that are like non-franchise based, I guess. Uh, anything that come every <laughs> anything that came out after this, in my opinion, I really just can't stand. Um, yeah, I'll watch. I'll give any anime that came out before Death Note a try, but I, I can't watch anything past it. It's all gone to shit. The Departed. This is my favorite Scorsese movie. I cannot believe how incredible this film is. If you've never seen The Departed, what are you doing? Uh, I still gotta watch a lot of Scorsese movies. Die Hard. This movie should never have gotten a sequel. It is perfect the way it is. Oh, man. What an excellent source of writing. Excellent piece of writing. Yeah. Django Unchained. This is one of my favorite Tarantino movies. Great steelbook as well. Kind of wish I had it in 4K. I don't think it's been released in 4K, though. Doctor Strange. This is also a really great MCU movie. A little bit above Black Panther and Ant-Man, in my opinion. Um... I really wish I had this one in 4K as well, but I do have it in 3D, so that's good. Now, right here is where I would have my Dragon Ball collection. I have the entirety of Kai and Super. I prefer Kai over regular Z because I think it has a better dub, and I also grew up on Kai, so there's that. It also doesn't have filler. Uh, Super's pretty great, too. I like Super. I also have two of the three recent movies. I have Battle of Gods and I also have Broly. But yeah, Broly, Super, and All of Kai are being rented out to friends right now. So that's why it's not there. Still need to get Resurrection F. Dunkirk. This is one of Nolan's best recent films. He's a master at filmmaking, obviously. Uh, yeah. Pretty great war movie. 8th grade, I really hope Bo Burnham keeps making movies because I absolutely love 8th grade and I love Bo Burnham. Um, I really hope he does something. Jeez. <sighs> what a great, talented guy. <laughs> the Emperor's New Groove and Kronk's New Groove. This is probably my favorite Disney movie ever. Shoot me. I don't care. I love The Emperor's New Groove. Fiddler on the Roof. This is a very sentimental film to me. I was in a production of this uh, play in uh, high school, sophomore year, is one of the best times of my life, and uh, this movie just takes me back. Fight Club, the movie you're not supposed to talk about, um, but I'm going to do it anyway, because why not? Uh, this is a really great steelbook. I love it. This is a really great David Fincher movie. I prefer a couple of other movies above Fight Club, I really love The Social Network. I wish I had it. Um, but yeah, I still really like Fight Club. First Man. Uh, I really, really liked this movie when it came out in theaters. Uh, a lot of people didn't, which makes me really want to rewatch it. But I haven't yet. Forever Strong. This is a movie that a lot of people outside of Utah have never heard of, but I really think that like, people would really enjoy it if they gave this one a try. Really heartfelt story. A uh, nice redemptive arc. Pretty great. Uh, Forrest Gump. This movie is perfect in a traditional sense. Pulp Fiction is perfect in a experimental sense, which is why I'm still okay with this beating 
Pulp Fiction for winning Best Picture that year. Uh, I think it's better than Shawshank or The Lion King. Four of the best movies of all time came out that year, so it was a very, very close call, in my opinion. But yeah, I'm still pretty happy with Forrest Gump winning. Full Metal Jacket, another Kubrick movie. Uh, I really, really like this one. Uh, this is probably my second favorite in the Holy Trinity of Vietnam War movies. Uh, yeah, this one's an incredible story about the duality of man, just with the Vietnam War in the background. So, yeah. Really, really interesting stuff. And for the last of this shelf, we have seasons one through one through seven of Game of Thrones. I love Game of Thrones. I hopped on the Game of Thrones bandwagon way too late in the game. I started it right as the final season was premiering, and I caught up right in time for the finale. And yeah, I don't own Season 8 yet, mainly because they haven't released any of these exclusives for Season 8. Also because the price for Season 8 is way too expensive for what we actually got. So yeah, kind of disappointing, but I'm still going to get it eventually. Next up we have another anime movie, The Garden of Words. Uh, this was directed by Makoto Shinkai, or Makoto Shinkai. Same guy who did Your Name and Weathering With You. Um, notice how I said in Death Note, uh, that was the cutoff. I, I make an exception for movies. I think that anime movies are still going pretty strong. This is not quite a feature, not quite a short. It's about 50 minutes long. Very gorgeously animated, very gorgeous story. I absolutely adore this film. Get Out. Uh, I, oh, I love Get Out. I think it should have won Best Picture that year, but alas, it didn't. Um... Jordan Peele is just such a Jordan Peele is just such an excellent director, um, and I really, really can't wait to see what he does next. The Girl Who Leapt Through Time. This is one of Mamoru Hosada's better films. I have most of his movies, except for three. Well, I mean, I have th I think I have three and don't have three. Yeah, I am like I am a big fan of him. Uh. I'm a big fan of his better stuff over his not as good stuff, but yeah, I really like the girl who left through time. Ghost in the Shell. This is a uh, Mamoru Oshi film. Same guy who made Angel's Egg. Uh, this one is v much more well known than Angel's Egg. This is a revolutionary film in the anime industry. This is an amazing steelbook as well. It's a Mondo steelbook. Came with a slipcover too. Really, really cool. Ghost in the Shell, the American remake with Scarlett Johansson. She got a lot of controversy for this film, but I thought it was still a really great movie. And I enjoy it, even though a lot of people hate it for whitewashing. Fuck that. <laughs> it has a very... It actually explains why she's not Asian. I wish I had that movie in 4K, because it looks gorgeous. Glass. Um, I went into this movie uh, hyped unbelievably hyped. It was like my third most anticipated movie of 2019. Uh, when I first saw it, I loved it. I thought it was incredible, and every single time I've rewatched it since, I've like liked it less and less. It's not very good, I think. There's a lot of great things about it, but like as an overall experience, I just I, uh, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> Still, I have it in 4K, so that's pretty cool. Godzilla, I got this mostly because I thought the MonsterVerse was going to go places, and it didn't. I mean, it's okay, obviously, but like, yeah, I wasn't a big fan of King of the Monsters. Maybe I'll get it eventually. Gone Girl. I love Gone Girl. This is one of David Fincher's best, in my opinion. Has great performances from Ben Affleck and Salma Hayek. Um, not Salma Hayek, Roseman Pike. Jeez. <laughs> Whatever, man. They have very similar names, in my opinion. Goodfellas. Uh, I really like Goodfellas, but not to the point where everyone else likes or seems to like Goodfellas. Um, it's by all means a classic, but I don't enjoy it as much as some other of his films. I, I don't really enjoy watching what the characters do, honestly. Maybe I just need to watch it more. I haven't seen it too many times. The Grey is a movie that I've never seen. I remember like really, really liking the uh, the TV spots when I was a kid and I saw it like really cheap and I was like, ooh, maybe I'll check out the gray. Still happened. 
Guardians of the Galaxy. I adore this movie. I loved, 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 loved it since watching it in theaters. And this is a gorgeous, gorgeous steelbook. 4K. But honestly, I like the second one more. Uh, I did not think that the first time I saw this movie, but as time has passed, I actually like the second one more. I think it takes the characters in much better places, and it really, it's honestly one of my favorite MCU movies. I, it's a hot take, I know, but like, honestly, that's how I feel. Hacksaw Ridge, uh, I still haven't seen all of this movie, I've seen parts of it. Um, I really like so far. I really like it so far, and it seems like a really great comeback for Mel Gibson as a director. Halloween, this is a classic. I love Halloween. If you've never seen it, what are you doing? It's one of the best slasher films, most important horror films ever. So yeah, get on that. The Harry Potter Collection, I hadn't seen these till very recently. But, yeah, I never grew up on Harry Potter, but I really, really like Harry Potter. I'm not big into fantasy, but my two big exceptions at the moment are Harry Potter and Game of Thrones. And, yeah, I have the whole set, and I really like this limited edition slipcover that only came out, like, before Crimes of Grindelwald was coming out. I don't have any of the Fantastic Beast films yet. I'm not as good as the regular Harry Potters. The Hateful Eight. Uh, I am mesmerized by this movie, but I don't really enjoy watching it. Again, just like Goodfellas, I don't really enjoy watching what these characters do on screen, but I still think it's genius what is being presented. Really weird take, I think. Hereditary. This is one of the best horror movies of all time, in my opinion. It's incredible. Tony Collette should have gotten an Oscar win, but wasn't even nominated for this movie. And Ari Aster is such an amazing director. Don't have Midsummer. Should get it, even though I don't really like it as much as Hereditary. The Hitman's Bodyguard, really dumb, really fun action comedy with Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, this is getting a sequel that I really can't wait for. The How to Train Your Dragon trilogy, I'm a big fan of the first one. And the second and third ones are pretty good, not like as good as the first one in my opinion. I just can't really get behind, um, a, I can't really understand why the freaking side characters are the way they are. They never progress as people and it really bothers me because they're always annoying. It's the biggest flaw I have with that franchise is that they're just in the way of a great story. Howl's Moving Castle. This is one of the best Ghibli films ever. Um, Miyazaki's follow-up to the Oscar-winning Spirited Away. I really like Howl's Moving Castle. I can't decide if I like it more than Spirited Away, though. The Hunger Games Collection. I just barely rewatched all of these in quarantine. Um, they're not as amazing as I thought they were, but I still really, really love them for nostalgic reasons. They came out at the perfect time in my life. Like, they're really, really, really cool. Uh, actually, Catching Fire has one of my favorite movie moments in all of cinema history with an awesome uh, aspect ratio change. And yeah, it blows me away every time that scene occurs. The Incredible Hulk. I really, really actually like The Incredible Hulk. It's not by any means an amazing MCU movie, but it's not crap. I like it a lot better than some of the other ones, and I like that it's totally different from all of them. And yeah, that's my thoughts on The Incredible Hulk. The Incredibles. I never grew up with this movie. I really wish I did. I love it. <laughs> it's so good. Um, yeah, I first saw this in anticipation for Incredibles 2, and I'm so glad I did, because I love it so, so much. <laughs> Incredibles 2, not quite as good as the first one, but I still really, really like it. Yeah, not sure if it was worth getting in 4K, so I just got the Blu-ray. <clears throat> the Indiana Jones Collection Steelbook, yep, all three of them, that's right because the fourth one does not exist, even though there's a fourth disc in here. But yeah, we don't talk about that one. Inglorious Bastards. I really, really like this Tarantino movie. I don't think it's one of my favorites per se, but it is one of his better ones. Um, yeah, I need to rewatch it again. I've only seen it once. Interstellar. I really wish I had this in 4K. 
Uh, my One of my best friends does have it in 4K because it's his favorite movie and he won't shut up about it and I love that. But yeah, uh, I really, really wish I had this in 4K. Don't have Inception. Uh, I don't have it right now anyway. I plan on getting it. I'm not in a rush, obviously. Uh, yeah, I think Inception's a bit overrated. But another Christopher Nolan movie that does start with the letter I, Insomnia. I love Insomnia. I really wish I had that one. I don't. I, mean, I really want to get Insomnia. Iron Fist, Season 1. This is a German Blu-ray, but it's region-free, so I got it. This was the very last of the Netflix Originals uh, Marvel TV shows to get a Blu-ray release. And I, at the time, I was a bit, big, massive completionist, and I had to get them all. But yeah, really cool steelbook for a very crappy season. Uh, Iron Man, the movie that started the MCU off. I love Iron Man. I wish I had it in 4K. Oh, it had such an awesome steelbook. I gotta get it eventually. I love Iron Man. Definitely top tier. Iron Man 2. I really like Iron Man 2 a lot more than a lot of the other MCU movies. Uh, a lot of people hate Iron Man 2. I love it. I find it a lot more entertaining than it, it is ever deserved to be. I might actually like it more than Iron Man 3. Uh, ah, they're probably around the same, actually. Um, I do like what Shane Black was going for. But... Not, not amazing. The Iron Giant, I really wish I grew up on this one as well because I cried when I saw this. And it's such a great movie by Brad Bird. I love Brad Bird as a director. It. I really, really like It. It's a great, great horror movie. One of the best Stephen King adaptations. And I'm really glad I have it in 4K because the colors are so great in It. It's a mad, 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 mad world. This was my grandpa's favorite comedy movie, and every time I watch it, I always think of him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Great, great, fun, classic comedy. Jaws. One of the best movies of all time, in my opinion. Maybe my favorite Spielberg movie. I can't decide. Uh, this is coming from somebody who hasn't seen Saving Private Ryan or Schindler's List. So, yeah, I'm uncultured. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I love Jaws. Jessica Jones, season one. Um, I love Jessica Jones. I'm actually re-watching this show right now. I've only seen season one once, and that was in 2015 when it came out, when I had small brain. But yeah, I definitely deserve to re-watch this show. I love it. I still love it. John Wick. Love John Wick. What an awesome shoot 'em up revenge movie. Had to get it in 4K because it's gorgeous. I also have the second one. I don't have the third one yet. I should get it, though, because they're all very gorgeous to look at. Jojo Rabbit, this was possibly my favorite movie of last year. I can't decide between this and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, uh, but this is one of my favorite Taika Waititi movies, for sure. Really wish I had a hunt for the Willard people. Joker, another great movie from last year. Um, not best picture worthy, in my opinion, but I'm really, really glad that Joaquin won best actor for this film. The Jungle Book, another great movie by uh, John Favreau. Uh, this is visually stunning. I this was like the only Disney live action remake that I was ever genuinely excited for until Mulan. Uh, I really hope we get to see Mulan soon because that movie looks freaking awesome. Jo Jurassic Park. <laughs> How did I stutter on that? Jeez, Jurassic Park is probably my favorite Spielberg, if not. Jaws. I can't decide between those two. Jurassic Park is just perfect in every single way. <laughs> what a quality film. Lost World is also pretty good, but not as good as the first one, in my opinion. I still like The Lost World. Three is eh. Now for Jurassic World, I have this really weird tin thingy with the Blu-ray in it. Um, I'm not going to go into why I have it. Uh, it was back when I was getting DVDs. I'll say that much. Justice League. Oh yeah, uh, I don't have Fallen Kingdom. That movie sucks. I'm gonna wait till it's like two dollars. <laughs> Justice League. What a controversial movie. <laughs> what a mess. This movie is an absolute mess, but it does have its moments, I guess. Um, release the Snyder Cut, please. I would like to see a movie that's not as big of a mess. Kiki's Delivery Service, what an amazing Ghibli film. This is like my number two when it comes to all the Ghibli movies. 
Oh, what a great heartwarming movie this is. Kill Bill Volume 1 and Kill Bill Volume 2. I have yet to see these movies because I'm uncultured and I need to see them like ASAP. I can't believe I haven't seen it yet. Kong Skull Island. What a great, fun, really fun monster movie. Uh, this was... Oh, I love the colors in this movie too. I kind of wish I had it in 4K. Uh, but yeah, that was the movie that made me go, Wow, this monster verse is going to be so cool. And then it's not. But, oh well. I still like that movie. Kung Fu Panda Trilogy is the last for this shelf. Um, I love all of these movies. One and two are amazing. And three is also pretty great too, but like, yeah. I love Kung Fu Panda. That's probably my favorite franchise out of all the DreamWorks movies. Moving on to this shelf over here. We're gonna uh, work our way through these now. Eventually. The Lego Movie. This is one of the best animated movies of all time. In my opinion, this has inspired me greatly uh, as a person. I love this movie so much. <laughs> yeah, what more did I say? Oh, what a great movie. It came out at the perfect time. Lego Movie 2, not quite as good as the first one, but still pretty good. I liked it. Lego Batman Movie. Ooh, I like this one. Uh, first act of this movie, I was grinning the entire time. What a great time. I love it. I love Lego Batman. <laughs> Les Miserables. Um, people hate on this movie. Well, fans of the play do anyway. I've never seen the play, but I really, really like this movie. Like, for its cinematography and its performances. Like, I feel bad for the director because he made a dumb choice and made cats. But, like, maybe he'll recover from that. Who knows? Life of Pi. This film is... Gorgeous. One of the most well-shot, well-looking movies I have ever seen in my entire life. I own this film in every format possible besides DVD. I don't have it in DVD. I have it 4K, Blu-ray, regular, uh, then 3D, and digital copy. So, <sighs> quadrilogy complete. The Lighthouse. Holy crap, what a weird horror movie. Um, it's basically like... A Wes Anderson movie, but it's horror-based, which is pretty friggin' cool. Uh, Robert Eggers is an amazing director, and I love The Witch as well, but unfortunately I don't have that one. I really want to get it, though. The Lion King. One of the best animated movies of all time. What can I say about The Lion King? Moving on. Logan. This was... I think this was the first R-rated movie I saw in theaters. Yeah, yeah. I really love Logan. What a great, amazing movie Logan is. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Made me cry. Luke Cage Season 1. Like I said, I was a completionist in getting these Netflix things. Um, I really love the first half of this season. The second half is not as great. This season also is very on the nose with its um, social commentary. A lot of people complain about Black Panther being on the nose. But I'm like, what? Have you seen Luke Cage? <laughs> much, much more on the nose. Mad Max. Um, I don't really dig Mad Max, the first one anyway. Uh, maybe it's just because I've started out with Fury Road and I, like, yeah, just never got into that one. And I haven't seen The Road Warrior, but I heard this is the second best one, or at least it's on par with Fury Road. And Fury Road on 4K. Fury Road is a masterpiece. I love Fury Road. Man of Steel. Um, this was pretty high in the DCEU for me. Uh, then I rewatched it and like, eh, it's okay. I prefer Aquaman over it and a lot of other movies over it. Definitely not as bad as like BVS or Suicide Squad, but like, it's lacking. The Matrix Trilogy. I only really liked the first one. These two bore me to death. Uh, I don't have nostalgia for it, obviously. But yeah. I think it's pretty good. I like the first one. I dig it. Um, Maze Runner Trilogy. Uh, these came out at the perfect time as well. I really like the first one for this one. Uh, these are really good guilty pleasures. The second one is pretty boring. Nothing really happens throughout. The but then the third film is really, really fun. Really, really stupid. Makes zero sense in a lot of the time, but like, still pretty great. I love it. Men in Black Trilogy. I've only seen the first one. I heard that 2 and 3 aren't too great. Mirai, another Mamoru Hosada film. Um, 
I really, yeah, I really like this one. This was the first anime movie I ever saw in theaters. Uh, but yeah, I think this has the best dub out of all of his films, but I don't think it is the best of his work. Moving on, we have Mission Impossible. I love the first Mission Impossible. This is such an awesome movie. I love it. What a great kickstart to an amazing franchise. Mission Impossible 3. I don't own 2 because 2 is significantly worse than all of them. 3 is very, very J.J. Abrams heavy because obviously he directed it, but you can definitely tell that he directed it. There's a lot of his tropes in that one. Probably one of his best movies, if I'm being honest. <laughs> that and The Force Awakens are really like the only ones that I really care about. Um, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. This one was my favorite in the franchise for the longest time. Brad Bird did an amazing job with this film. It is so good. I love, love, love Ghost Protocol. Rogue Nation is also pretty fun. Definitely not as good as uh, Ghost Protocol, or even the first one in my opinion. I prefer this one over 3 and 2, definitely though. This one's a lot of fun. But the best one is Fallout. Fallout is mind-blowing. Like, this may have been my favorite movie of 2018. Say, oh wait, no, no, no. <laughs> Infinity War and Spider-Verse came out that year, but this one was really close to both of those. Whoa. Moana? This is a gorgeous steelbook for a gorgeous movie. Um, holy crap. This is such an awesome movie. I love Moana. I don't have Frozen, obviously, because... We've been through the F's. Oh, man. I, I hate Frozen, by the way. <laughs> All of them. Mother. Another movie where a director is battling, like, his inner thoughts about, like, religion as a concept. Like, Angel's Egg. Uh, Darren Aronofsky is insane at directing this movie. This is a fucked up movie. Very, very fucked up. Really awesome, though. I loved it. My Neighbor Totoro, perfect, perfect Julie film. Not my favorite, but I still think it's perfect. <sighs> Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, this one is also really good. One of the few sci-fi uh, Ghibli films, in fact, I think it's the only sci-fi one, truly. I really wish they would delve more into sci-fi, because I like sci-fi a lot more than fantasy. Nebraska. This is one of my favorite comedies of all time. Uh, or dramedies. Yeah, best dramedy ever. <laughs> the only flaw I really have with this is that um, the last little bit can go on for a bit too long, but it's a very, very heartwarming, amazing, amazing film. Please check out Nebraska, because I know a lot of you have never heard of it. Night at the Museum. Uh, this one's fun. I... I have a lot of nostalgia for Night at the Museum. I really only like the first one. I actually haven't seen two or three, actually, so I can't really say that. The Nightmare Before Christmas. Perfect. Best in it. One of the best animated movies of all time, in my opinion. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This is my second favorite Tarantino movie. This movie has inspired me greatly as a filmmaker. Ugh, what an incredible film. A lot of people don't have that at the top of their Tarantino lists, which really surprises me, because I absolutely love Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Here's a movie that not a lot of people have heard of, Ordinary World, starring uh, Billy Joel Armstrong, the lead singer of Green Day. Um, that's mostly why I bothered to watch this movie, but it's really, really good. I think it's better than a, any guilty pleasure out there. I mean, definitely. Give this one a try. It's actually really good. Next up we have Pacific Rim. I have not seen this movie in a long, long time, but I really, really liked it when it came out. Um, yeah, a lot of people hate the sequel, so eh, I wasn't really interested, so I haven't seen it yet. Parasite. This movie is awesome. I'm so glad this movie won Best Picture. It's not my favorite movie from last year, but it's one of them. And I'm really glad that it won because it proved to the world that foreign film can win Best Picture. So, yeah. Also, side note, Bong Joon-ho has tied the record for the most Oscars won in one night. The only other person to do that was Walt Disney. And he did it for four separate films. Bong Joon-ho did it for one. That's insane. Perfect Blue. 
Ooh, what a messed up movie this is. Uh, really, really gorgeous to look at. Uh, really effed up. Really, really effed up. <sighs> insane, insane story. Uh, Platoon, the third installment in the holy trinity of Vietnam War movies. Um, I feel like all three of those movies are perfect in their own special way for what they're trying to do. I think Platoon is the one that I enjoy the least out of all of them, but I still think Platoon is an incredible film. Ponyo. A oh, very, very innocent Ghibli film. Uh, not one of my favorites, but it is stunning to look at. Predator. Oh, get to the top! I, uh, I love Predator! <laughs> I'm sorry. The Prestige. This is probably my favorite non-Batman Nolan film. I love The Prestige. Oh, watching this movie for the first time was such an incredible experience. If you've never seen this, you are truly missing out on an incredible masterpiece of a film. Princess Mononoke. This is my favorite Ghibli film. It is stunning. It is perfect in every way. And yeah, the slipcover is obviously a bootleg, but the Blu-ray is the real deal, I promise. But yeah, I love Princess Mononoke. Pulp Fiction, this is my favorite Tarantino movie. I think, like I said earlier, it's perfect in an experimental sense. So, yeah, Pulp Fiction is perfect. I love, I love, I love Pulp Fiction. Puss in Boots, I don't really know why I own this movie. I think it was cheap on eBay one time. I haven't seen this movie since I was 11, so yeah. I think it's good. I remember it being good. It's got a good Rotten Tomatoes score, so I guess it's good. A Quiet Place. This movie is so cool. Um, definitely only watch this movie with a really loud sound system, because the sound editing is incredible in this film. Ready Player One. Ah, oh, what a cool visually. A spectacular film. Uh, I really wish I had this in 4K, but unfortunately I don't. I got this on Black Friday for like five bucks. The Rambo Collection. Oh man, I love First Blood. I think it's nearly perfect. Um, two is guilty pleasure fun. Three is crap. I don't like three. The fourth one is insane, and I love the fourth one. I think it's an incredible story. Um, five, Last Blood. I'm disappointed in that one. Not as bad as three, but like, what a disappointment. Yeah, so I don't have that one. I'll probably wait for that one to be in the bargain bin to get it. Reservoir Dogs, the movie that started Tarantino's career. Oh man, this is so good. So, so good. Definitely in the higher ups for his filmography in my opinion. The Revenant, oh what a gorgeous movie. I'm so glad I have it in 4K. Uh, finally earned Leo his well-deserved Oscar. Rick and Morty seasons one through three. Oh, man, what a funny, funny show. I love every single episode of this. Oh, man. All right, now I'm going to get season four when that comes out, too. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Ah, oh, what a great start to a trilogy that was never, ever going to be as good as people thought. Well, I mean, let me rephrase that. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. People thought this trilogy was going to suck, and then this movie blew them all out of the water. What an awesome Kickstarter to a great trilogy. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is like nearly as good as that. I think it's a, maybe a little better. I think it's on the same uh, quality line. They're both incredible films. I think War is my favorite one, though. War is so... I need to rewatch War. Ooh, incredible. The Road to El Dorado. I really wish I grew up on this movie, but I'm obsessed with it. Uh, what a fun, fun adventure. The Rocky Collection. I adore the Rocky franchise so much. The first one is one of my favorite movies of all time. Rocky Balboa is also incredible. A bunch of those middle chapter films are just fun. But I, 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 I love them all. Honestly, except for five. Five sucks. The Sandlot. 
You hear that? That's pretty cool. <sighs> he got big pee pee. Uh, Sandlot. <sighs> oh man, what an awesome childhood movie. I first time I watched this was on a big, no, not big, a small little clamshell TV in a tent with my cousins. <sighs> what a fun experience that was. Love, love, love the Sandlot. Here's another movie a lot of you outside of Utah don't know. This is called The Saratov Approach. It's about two missionaries that get kidnapped and held for ransom in Russia. Oh man, for what for the budget that they had, um, this is really, really good. Like, yeah. I mean, it does have some pacing issues in the middle, but overall, this is still a really great movie. Very well acted. And I forgot that I have this, so this would, chronolo uh, alphabetically, this would go before this. Samurai Jack, the complete series. This is my favorite cartoon of all time. It is a masterpiece. It is so gorgeous to look at. And, yeah, if you've never seen Samurai Jack, please, I implore you to check that one out. The Secret World of Arietti. It was the first Ghibli film that I ever saw, and... I rewatched it recently. It's okay. But I'm really glad that I watched it because it got me into Ghibli films. Final shelf. Final shelf. Here we go. Shazam. This is definitely one of my favorite DCEU movies. This is number two in my list. I have Wonder Woman just above it. But I, I absolutely love Shazam. What a fun, fun movie. Uh, the Shining. This is quite possibly my favorite film of all time. What a masterpiece. Holy crap. This movie gives me chills whenever I think about it. And another Kubrick film, Spartacus. I still have not seen Spartacus. I got this steelbook at Best Buy for like $7. Um, only Blu-ray. Kind of wish it was in 4K because I want every uh, Kubrick film in 4K, but it looks like they're not doing it for that one, which sucks. Anyways, Spider-Man 2. I really wish I had Spider-Man 1. I like Spider-Man 1 more than Spider-Man 2, but I found this one. I don't have 3, don't care about 3. But yeah, 2 is still pretty great. I love 2. Spider-Verse. This is my favorite Spider-Man movie ever. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is perfect in every way. I This is one of the rare occurrences where, like, animation truly just blew me absolutely away. Only two movies have ever done that. In animation, anyway. That, this, and Akira. From earlier. But yeah. This is, technically, I think this is better than Akira. But they mean about the same to me, honestly. No, <laughs> never mind. Um, Homecoming. This is an awesome Spider-Man movie. This was my favorite up until Spider-Verse, actually. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't grow up on the original ones. I don't have any nostalgia for them, okay? I... Actually, you know, I think this one is just as good as Spider-Man 1, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that. Far From Home. This is a really cool 4K Best Buy steelbook. Um, I really liked Far From Home. Not as much as Homecoming, but the ending of Far From Home led to some awesome setup for the third movie. So glad that they reworked the Spider-Man deal. Spirited Away, the only anime film to ever win Best Animated Feature. I love, love Spirited Away. Um, like I said, it's not my favorite Ghibli movie, because Princess Mononoke is my favorite Ghibli movie. Uh, I need to rewatch this movie some more, because maybe I don't appreciate it as much as I should. Split. Ooh, what an incredible performance from James McAvoy in this movie. Oh, man, and the twist ending it blew my mind. Like, even though I kind of knew... It got spoiled for me. I was, it still blew my mind, and the movie still worked before the ending. Like, holy crap, what a great movie. Okay, now we're getting into my absolute favorite part of this entire, entire thing. I love Star Wars. Star Wars is my absolute favorite thing ever, okay? Like, I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt right now. I absolutely love, love, love Star Wars. So, um, this is my Star Wars collection. The prequel trilogy. 
I really wish I had a slip cover of this, but I don't. I love Revenge of the Sith. Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones are not too great. But I do have like a little bit of nostalgia for them. Just a little bit, even though I don't think they're that amazing. Um, I'm really glad that they exist, because that means Clone Wars exist. I love this show. One of the best TV shows ever, in my opinion. Oh, I love Clone Wars so much. And I really, really hope that they release Season 7 on Blu-ray. I also have the movie, which sucks. And then I have Season 6 as well, because I didn't release it with this 1 through 5 box set. Solo. Um, I really enjoyed Solo. I didn't think it was a masterpiece. You know, I wasn't trying to be. I mean, it's just fun. Turn off your brain and watch Star Wars, essentially. I liked it. Star Wars Rebels. I love Star Wars Rebels. I have all four seasons of Rebels. Uh, if you've never seen Rebels, I implore you to check it out. It gets insane by season four. Um, it makes you rethink everything you think you know about Star Wars. And that's why I love it so much. An incredible, incredible group of characters in this show. <sighs> Check out Rebels. I love Rebels. I can gush about it all day. Rogue One. I like Rogue One. Um, it kind of tried to do what Rebels did, but definitely not as good. They're taking a bunch of characters that we've never heard about and having them do stuff. Um... But yeah, uh, I, I, I like it. I love the aesthetic of this one. Really, really cool. The original trilogy. Oh, I love the original trilogy. Uh, I mean, not these ones. These are the special editions. But these aren't. These are the despecialized editions that I have on Blu-ray, as well as the actual uh, DVDs that were in here originally. But yeah. Ugh. I would, however, the only if I were to get the new 4Ks for the original trilogy, I would only get Empire, because I actually kind of prefer the special edition of Empire over the theatrical cut. But yeah, the only way I can watch A New Hope and Return of the Jedi is the theatrical cut. I, I can't stand the special editions. Star Wars The Force Awakens. I really liked this movie when it came out. It's, um, it's pretty fun. I don't think it's a masterpiece. Like, I don't like J.J. Abrams. But yeah, it's okay. I like it. The Last Jedi? It has problems, but I love it. Like, it's really, really, really great. I think it's the best shot Star Wars movie out of all of them. I really wish I had it in 4K. But yeah, I love The Last Jedi. I love the direction that it was taking. But... Unfortunately, we got The Rise of Skywalker, and I have never been more disappointed by a movie in a theater in my entire life. I wanted to cry after seeing this movie, because I felt betrayed. <laughs> yeah, this is also the movie that I broke my rule today for. I actually went out and bought a non-essential item, and it was this movie because I just had to put it in this video, because I'm such a big Star Wars completionist. <sighs> and for this last little bit here, we'll be shooting it on my phone, because my one compact drive decided to have itself be corrupted. So yeah, apologies for the continuity error, I guess. Alright, where were we? Suicide Squad. Really, really stupid. Fun guilty pleasure comic book action movie. Really, really stupid. Oy. <laughs> Dumb fun. But yeah, I enjoy it. Super bad. This movie never fails to put a smile on my face. What a funny, funny movie. Uh, my high school experience wasn't like this at all, but like, whatever. It's all good. You'll also notice the lighting's different now because now the sun has gone down. So, yeah. Lovely, huh? The Tale of Princess Kaguya. Um, this movie freaking broke me. 
absolutely broke me. Um, the animation is gorgeous. They animated it with watercolor. How many animated movies have been done in watercolor? Like, that's insane to think about. Like, give this one a try if you haven't seen it. T2, Judgment Day. Uh, I have still yet to see T1. No. What am I saying? Yeah, I've seen T1. I don't have T1. I've been talking too long, you guys. I wish I had T1. I wish they would also stop making Terminator movies because they're really oversaturated the market now. Thor, really, really boring. <laughs> I don't like Thor. It's a stupid movie. Um, Thor the Dark World. Uh, this movie sucks. <laughs> this is also the first MCU movie that I ever saw in theaters, which is very, very, very sad. So, yeah. Oh, well. Thor Ragnarok. This one's awesome. I like this one. Taika Waititi is such an amazing director. He's probably like my favorite director right now. Um, yeah, I do own a 4K disc of this also. Uh, I found it just lying on the ground, like in the parking lot of a Walmart. So I was like, I'm taking it. It didn't have any scratches either. It was a miracle. Top Gun. Uh, I have the Steelbook. I haven't seen Top Gun in a long, long time. I got it in preparation for Top Gun Maverick, which was supposed to come out in July, but it's now coming out in December because of the friggin' virus. <sighs> this, this sucks. <laughs> Next up, we've got... All four... Toys... All four Toy Story movies. I'm dead. Guys, I'm dead. But yeah, I think the... They're all perfect except for two. I think two is almost perfect, but not quite. But yeah, I own these ones in Blu-ray format, and I have this one in 4K. Uh, yeah, I have that one in 4K because Toy Story 4 was actually the very first animated movie to be natively rendered in 4K, which is mind-blowing. And like, there's animation in that film that looks photorealistic. It's insane. Unbreakable. This is M. Night Shyamalan's best film, in my opinion. I think it is a masterpiece. And props to the friend who got me into this series. I love this movie. Uncut Gems. Uh, this is probably my favorite Adam Sandler movie. Safety Bro the Safety Brothers directed the hell out of this movie. I love it. I also wish I had Good Time, which they also did, but I don't. Us. Uh, this is probably my favorite horror movie of the last decade. Jordan Peele is an absolute horror master at this point. I like this one better than Get Out, honestly, which a lot of people disagree on. This is a very polarizing movie, but this movie completely won me over. What an incredible film. V for Vendetta, I think is overrated. Yeah. Uh, I like a lot of the performances and aesthetic, but I really wish that this was a TV show. Uh, Alan Moore made a massive story that you just cannot condense into a two hour long movie. Venom. A lot of people have different opinions on this movie. For me, it is a total guilty pleasure. I find it hilarious in like the best, worst possible way. Uh, this was also the very first review I ever put on this channel from like two years ago. I'm such a lazy bastard. <laughs> I gotta get keep up with this stuff. Warm Bodies. I saw this very recently, actually. Um, I thought it would be funnier, honestly. It's more of a rom-com than a zom-com, but I liked it. Warrior. This is one of the best sports dramas ever made, in my opinion. Uh, I gotta check out more of Gavin O'Connor's work, like Miracle and The Way Back, which just came out. I'm not gonna pay 20 bucks to rent it right now, though. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Classic, classic. Rest in peace, Gene Wilder. Oh, man. What, what a marvelous film. I wish it was available in 4K. The Wind Rises. This is the current, most recent Hayao Miyazaki film. I really hope that he lives to see the day of completing his latest film, How Do You Live? That's currently my most anticipated movie ever right now. And I really hope that we can get it soon. When Marnie Was There. This is another Ghibli film. This is their most recent film. 
for 2014. This is the last movie that they made completely by themselves. Red Turtle came out, but that was a partnership. Really hope they can get their financial stuff back together because I want them to keep making movies. Next up is Wolf Children. This is Mamoru Hosada's best film so far, in my opinion. Um, the Girl Who Went Through Time and Mirai are both really, really great films. I don't like The Boy and the Beast. And I haven't seen Summer Wars or even Dejima in the movie, okay? Like, I still think this is his best one. I think Mirai does have a better dub. This is his best movie. This made me almost cry. But, um, unfortunately, furries love this movie for a different reason. The Wolf of Wall Street, one of Scorsese's best films ever. Um, yeah, it holds the world record for the most F-bombs in a movie. But it doesn't feel that way. It feels very, very, very fluid. And But it is three hours long, so that's probably why. The Wolverine. Definitely not perfect, but still really, really good. Uh, I think James Mangold had the right idea with it. And then he... Totally just blew himself out of the water with Logan, which was a masterpiece. So, yeah. Wonder Woman. I still think this is the best DC movie to come out since The Dark Knight. I love Wonder Woman. What an incredible, awesome movie. Like, even the final action piece works for me. Which, a lot of people disagree on that. But I really like it. I think it works. Despite what everybody says. The X-Men Original Trilogy... Uh, I like all of these. Uh, even The Last Stand, I think, is okay. It's not perfect by any means, but it's okay. Uh, the sequels. I love First Class, and I love Days of Future Past. Apocalypse is okay. It does not include Dark Phoenix, which I still haven't seen. I don't plan on seeing it, because apparently it's shit. And my final Blu-ray is Your Name. <sighs> Makoto Shinkai, what a great movie you've made. I gotta get weathering with you when it comes out on Blu-ray. But yeah, that's my that's my collection, guys. Thanks for bearing with me. I had to get this one off my chest for a long time. So, like, what, two, three takes later and one corrupted hard drive? And we got it, we got it. I, 